we had enough images of us being drug dealers and you know degenerates and unhumanly. Mm-hmm. I wasn't one. I didn't want to contribute to that. Mm-hmm. Time, <laughs> I was on a movie set, and literally the gangsters were funding the movie, and they were using the movie as a laundry. Furthermore, we had an adequate number of pictures of us being street pharmacists, and you know, degenerates and unhuman lay. I wasn't neat, I would have rather not added to that time I was on a film set. And in a real sense, the hoodlums were financing the film. And they were involving the film as a clothing Wesley kills has gotten people talking in Hollywood, as of late with his frank comments. Some Aeoli spectators accept that he may be in a roundabout way targeting conspicuous figures like Tyler Perry Kill, is by all accounts venting his disappointment over a well-established issue in the business, which is the propensity for projecting darker-looking people in jobs that sustain unsafe generalizations, especially those connected with viciousness inside the African-American population. What Kills has all the earmarks of being pushing for is a more nuanced and comprehensive depiction of people of color in the media In less complex terms, he's truism that it's the ideal opportunity for Hollywood to move forward and show a more extensive scope of characters that mirror the variety and intricacy of the dark experience this present time. This isn't the main opportunity that worries about racial generalizations in Hollywood have been raised numerous craftsmen and activists have featured this issue in the past, encouraging the business to split away from these hurtful examples. So what precisely did Wesley Clip say that is creating such a ruckus? Well, a subject has left fans overall as eager and anxious as ever enthusiastically. Anticipating more subtleties, you certainly don't have any desire to miss the remainder of this video, where we'll dig further into Kill's remarks and the discussion encompassing racial portrayal in Hollywood. And we can choose when something matters when something matters around. Quite a while back, there was very much a mix in media outlets. Everything rotated around the possible recovery of an exemplary movie called New Jack City, a film that had highlighted Wesley Kills in a huge job over 10 years sooner. This entire circumstance provoked a ton of curiosity on the grounds that the first film played had a fundamental influence in catapulting S.N. Kills to begin him and furthermore filled his pockets with a reasonable plan of money. Yet we should rewind a piece, New Jack City coordinated by Mario Van People groups, and delivered in 1991, was a dirty wrongdoing show that investigated the dull underside of the unlawful medication exchange, the clamoring roads of New York City in this film. Wesley Kills depicted ruler Nino Brown, a person who was both magnetic and savagely threatening the film did pretty well financially. Yet it was not without its reasonable part of debate. You see the manner in which New Jack City portrayed its African-American characters caused a commotion. Many individuals were stressed that the film may be supporting destructive generalizations about African-Americans, especially by depicting them as lawbreakers associated with criminal operations. This analysis didn't set well with everybody, and it lighted conversations about the effect of such treacheries in media. Quick forward to the new buzz about the potential New Jack City restoration. It took this large number of worries, packed to the cutting edge individuals, were interested about how this undertaking would deal with the delicate issues raised by the first film, the possibility of returning to the story and characters from over 10 years prior was evidently captivating. Yet it likewise accompanied the heaviness of obligation to address those worries and depict African-American characters in a more nuanced and smart way. As a result of this, Wesley Kills pursued a gallant and significant choice that expected to challenge the current account that frequently advanced unsafe generalizations about his local area. He made a striking stride by freely declaring that he wouldn't be taking on an unmistakable job. In the continuation of the film, his principled position was tied in with focusing on validness and depicting his local area in a conscious manner. This choice offered a strong expression. Anyway, this brave demonstration didn't be ignored, and it appeared to have worked up some contention inside media outlets. A few people 
gave off an impression of being awkward. With this disturbance of the typical approach to getting things done by reports, when gotten some information about the possibility of a reboot of New Jack City Wesley Kills, didn't appear to be too excited. He limited any association with it, saying I'm not related with it. I don't have anything to do with it, by any means in a meeting with Brooke Obi of Shadow. An act he imparted his insight that a few things ought to be left, as they are he felt that assuming something functioned admirably in the past, since it mirrored the times, and the story depended on the thing was occurring then it probably will be really smart to reproduce it in the present various conditions about playing the street pharmacist from the outset. Truly I turned the film two or multiple times when they first the hosts of the morning meal club, including Charlemagne the God, additionally, could have done without changing New Jack City. They even moved toward Wesley Kills about it, and he let them know no as a matter of fact, he expressed no to the thought commonly. And he's very firm about it. He's clarified that he's not intrigued it. Seems like individuals who pursue choices in media outlets weren't content with Wesley cut position on this matter. Throughout the long term, things got harder for Kills, particularly when he began getting jobs that didn't exactly match his troublemaker picture. One model is the film Rising Sun, when gotten some information about Tales that he wasn't content with his job in the movie Kills explained that there wasn't really any need to focus on the amount of he possessed to do in the film, yet the way in which his personality acted, and responded to things he felt that his personality appeared to be a piece frail, yet he made sense of that it didn't have anything to do with his own character. It was exactly the way that the person was composed to do that. No, I mean the roller that was in you, make the best choice, was significantly more modest than the role in our significant association. And it didn't actually have an element you realize quality to it. As we've seen, Wesley Kills didn't avoid taking a stand in opposition to these issues in Hollywood. This anyway wasn't invited by the business which was at that point getting baffled with him, most would agree his vocation, confronted a few huge difficulties, starting here ahead. Kills his disclosures about the business, attempting to categorize him into cliché jobs, because of his race, just started to expose a lot more concerning issue. Numerous different famous people have likewise courageously had comparable stories, focusing on Hollywood's profoundly imbued predispositions and practices one such superstar jokester, Chris Rock, worked up to bait by recommending that Tyler Perry, a prestigious movie producer, could have inadvertently advanced colorism. In his well-known motion pictures, Rock offered these comments during a conversation about what could have happened to Tupac Shakur on the off chance that he were alive today. He conjectured that Tupac could have turned into a political pioneer However, there was additionally an opportunity that he might have wound up in a Tyler Perry film rock, brought up that in Tyler Perry's motion pictures, there's much of the time a lady in a pained relationship, and the individual she's in a terrible relationship, with will in general have hazier skin rocks remarks, caused to notice a repeating subject in Tyler Perry's movies, where dark-skinned male characters were depicted as bad guys, while lighter-skinned male characters were given a role as the heartfelt legends who protected female heroes from disturbed connections. This story structure raised worries that Perry's movies could accidentally support destructive generalizations and add to colorism inside the African-American people group, as of later rush of discussion has encircled Tyler Perry, and many fans are seeing a disturbing theme, a large portion of his fights appear to include people from his own local area, especially those with brown complexion, tones one conspicuous model is the public quarrel between Tyler Perry and Monique the fight originate from Monique's choice, not to advance the movie valuable, focusing on family time, over going to celebrations and press occasions, initially offered a small installment of $50,000 for her job in the free film, Valuable the movie's prosperity at the Sundance movie celebration pulled in Perry and Oprah. As leader makers, things took a turn when the valuable group encouraged Monique to lobby for the honors during the movie season. 
She stood firm requesting fair pay and declining to think twice about Standard's bits of gossip about her being troublesome surfaced with Perry purportedly talking adversely about her lately Monique straightforwardly tended to feeling repudiated and pointed fingers at Perry Oprah and Lee Daniels for obstructing her vacation. Perry later attempted to accommodate by communicating regret and promising a general acknowledgement to Monique. In another new episode, a TikToker offered experiences into what it's truly similar to work with Tyler Perry. This sincere disclosure shed light on the intricacies and difficulties of being essential for Tyler Perry's expert world's disturbing that these disclosures indicate expected abuse of youthful entertainers, especially those inside the African-American people group. So when you consider it, Wesley Kills is source of inspiration aimed at compelling figures in the business is a striking